a cricket podcast with music, the usual sort of stuff. So um, please welcome the host of the cricket pitch, it's Emma John! Please welcome to the stage, Andy Zaltzman. Who here is aware of Chris Tavery? And who has never heard of Chris Tavery? What are you losers doing with your lives? <laughs> I think sport has become far too professional, far too serious. Uh, you know, people, particularly the Australians, it's all about winning for them. But that's not what sport is about. Sport is about happiness. It's about joy, that simple pleasure we, we get from playing sport as children. And England realised that. And they, through their World Cup campaign, gave a lot of people a lot of joy. Um, <laughs> Australians, New Zealanders, <laughs> Sri Lankans, you know, 150 million Bangladeshis had the fucking party of their lives. <laughs> Dean Warren Headley was born on the 27th of January 1970. He shares his birthday with Mozart and Sir Francis Drake and Mark Owen, the little one from Take That. Unlike Mozart and Drake and the little one from Take That, Dean Headley is an English cricketer. He was born in Stourbridge, which is a place, but he does come from a famous cricketing family, being the first test cricketer to be both the son and grandson of test cricketers. Also, his twin brother is Graham Gooch, weirdly. <laughs> in 1989, when I was just 11, Dean played for Worcestershire's second team. In 91, he moved to Middlesex, then Kent, then he played for England between 97 and 99. At that point in my life, I was working in Budgeons, Still, we've all ended up here tonight, so he's not necessarily better than me. <laughs> he's currently a cricket coach for Stanford School and he sports West Brom, West Brom Albion, but that's in a different, slightly more popular sport. <laughs> he is Dean Warren Headley! Well, when I toured, what was great about tours, there was no Facebook or Twitter. Uh, <laughs> so I think uh, David Graveney always said to me that we played the last years where you could properly enjoy tours. And after each game, we would go out for a drink. We'd, um, you know... Bomb. A drink? Just one? Yeah, it's a bucket. <laughs> Believe me, these things get weirder. <laughs> to be fair, I thought that was Ian Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this one? Choir boy? His dead eyes suggest something more sinister, if you ask me. <laughs> Well done, absolutely. Joe Auckland, the trumpeter here, um, is actually a big Jimmy Anderson fan. He's uh, following on from this. He's written a song about Jimmy Anderson's uh, achievement. So he's going to sing that. He's going to use the worst of all instruments, the banjo. So <laughs> apologies for that. There's a right arm from Lancashire so strong and true and fast That it's made the history books by leading the first class it's left so many landmarks in its terrifying wake Nobody knows how many more wickets it can take Oh, oh Jimmy Anderson It's Felix White of the Maccabees <laughs> We've been asked to do some um, sort of cricket associ association dinners and stuff, but um, they never want to do any of that stuff because they don't care really who Michael Affent is or anything like that. Is it, is it good but money? To me. <laughs> is it good money? Sacrilege. What? Is it good money? Because we'll do it. I thought there was something really beautiful about the way Phil's huffing and bold. And he was kind of an anti-gladiator in a lot of ways because people really loved Phil Tufnell. Um, and I think part of that, because we... Because we would probably behave the same way he did in a lot of test matches, you know what I mean, if we put in that situation. What, like run away from Kirtley Yeah, and just, <laughs> just get up and walk. Or... Well, I'd written a, uh, or crafted a question for you, which was, uh, if musicians were cricketers... Mm -hmm. So I've got... I had Tufnell down as Damon Albarn, actually, and I've got Phil Collins as Phil Edmonds, because I think they're the same person, pretty much. <laughs> I've got you as James Anderson, because I'm very handsome. Very good-looking. Good Thanks, babe. Who's KP? Who's Kevin Peterson? Who's the worst musician? Well... Who's the... <laughs> who's the <laughs> I thought I'd share some excerpts from the uh, book. I don't know if any of you have read it. KP uh, is shortlisted for the uh, Booker Prize <laughs> for, uh, for fiction. Uh, also, um, <laughs> later that evening, I was dozing off in my room when the ghost of WG Grace appeared to me in a vision, told me that he was miles better than me and that I was fucking shit. <laughs> I was starting to feel that the England cricket hierarchy didn't want me anymore. <laughs> Who would like to see a little bit of Curtly Ambrose and Richie Richardson's first music video? Let's, let's watch that. 
we invited Tim Key, the poet, to come and perform here, uh, but he went to the Crucible to watch the snooker instead. Another game! Yay! Ooh, good, you're excited too. Um, so this, this game is called um, Alistair Cook or Alistair Cook. Do you have faith in this song? I went on a bird-watching trip with Billy Bowden It was very disappointing He kept spotting bird after bird I couldn't see And it was very hard to tell where he was pointing <laughs> Antigua used to have a stand that literally moved this just doesn't do it justice at all. You, 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 you're seeing it on video. But if only I could show you these moves in real life. I mean, if, we, if, if only, like, there was some way. You were just out there for the first test, that's yes. right, isn't it? Yes. Um, so, and you weren't actually, you're not officially a bar, you're not official Barmy Army. I'm a Barmy Army member, yeah, right. but I went on my own. But you went on your own. Yeah. And you, you... Barmy Army. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10, we've got Graham Onions. It's a funny name, Onions. Oh yeah, Will will sing some of them. He goes well with Phil Mustard and Alan Lamb and Graham Swan. When I played, there was a lot of negativity. It was all about England going out and not losing it. Whereas now it's like, how are we going to win? And my, if I was going to criticise England at the moment, I think we're very formulaic. We have plans and we stick to the plans. And there's not a lot of spark factor. 